Hello, everyone, and welcome back to this week's episode of the Keen Gamer Podcast. My name is Kyle Shamillard, and of course, we have a great show for you this week. But it can't be a great show without great guests. So let me introduce back to the show, Noah Rosenthal. Thanks for being back here. Good to be here, Kyle. Of course. And of course, you know her voice. Welcome back, Jessica Orr. Welcome. Hi, nice to talk to you again. Of course. Um, so I think we have a bit of a lighter week. I do think that we're kind of in the calm before the storm. We had Dying Light 2 and Pokemon Legends come out recently. We have uh, Horizon Forbidden West and Elden Ring on the horizon. This week, nothing major coming out, but we do want to talk more about some of those games. We'll do the news, and at the very end of the show, our topic for you is going to be our 2022 video game predictions. So whether it's a game suddenly being released, an acquisition, uh, the Switch Pro 4K unit being announced, who knows? But at the end of the show, you will hear Noah, Jessica, and I's thoughts on what we think could happen in this year in gaming. But before we start, or actually, we're starting already. Here we are. Uh, I want to start with Jessica. She was here last week talking about Dying Light 2. And now that it's come out, the Metacritic reviews are out. I've seen people talking about it on Twitter. Um, mostly positive, some negative. Now that you've had more time with the game, do you have any uh, extended thoughts or any more opinions you want to throw out there? Yeah, so... It like I said last week, it is still a very strange story. The places mm -hmm. they go, I've seen the consensus that Aiden is a boring protagonist and he is, like I mentioned the fact that there were other more interesting characters. I think I mentioned it last week. Um, Rosario Dawson's character is, is the best character in it because she actually has a personality. Yeah. Uh, Aiden isn't all that interesting. Um, and it's not the greatest story in the world, but I still haven't seen the end of it because it's just so long. <laughs> and I've been, I've been doing side stuff as well. Mm. It's there's there's like a, I accidentally stumbled upon a a whole new area basically for exploration. So it has got the like I was saying last week that I know you like Bethesda games. No, it's it's got a very Bethesda feel to it. Uh, like if Bethesda had parkour, but nowhere near, nowhere near the story quality that those imagine games Bethesda had. had parkour though like imagine like That's parkouring what I was through skyrim yeah. <laughs> parkouring up those mountains would be a lot easier than oh 100 yeah glitch jumping <laughs> um question about the protagonist because i def you're not the only person i've heard say that this protagonist is kind of just like you couldn't tell him from a lineup of a hundred other protagonists from open world games does the game attempt to give him an arc or a story or is he more just like an avatar for you the player yeah, like, he's got a story. It's just that it's oh, okay. It's Generic, not interesting. Yeah, interesting. It's it's been it's not spoilers from the very beginning. He's searching for his sister, yeah. um, and that's the entire entire game that's what he's trying to do. But the side stories are more interesting. But they never reach the peaks of this. Like, like oh, this is actually a very good story. Mm -hmm. Like, like I just reiterate what I said last week. It's kind of like the, it's the same thing every time. You get this person's character traits. You get the thing they want you to do, you go and do it, and then they're like, ah, but there's a twist here. I'm a good guy or I'm a bad guy. It's, it's all kind of the same. But uh, but the other big issue, I did mention bugs last week. Yeah. And I've put probably another 20 or 30 hours into it since then. The bugs get so much worse the longer you go into the game. Interesting. Uh, hard crashes. This I'm playing on Xbox. Apparently it's a lot, a lot worse on PC. They're getting all the fallen through the environment glitches um, i've seen those pretty, yeah some pretty funny ones to be fair yeah <laughs> um but i was on a very important mission and i'll actually say what the mission's called just to warn people it's called broadcast yeah. okay. do not do anything else while you're on this mission just try and complete it because it will mess up it can delete saves I, I, my experience was with it i got this bug where you couldn't hear any audio and you couldn't mm -hmm. see the subtitles so i did the entire mission not knowing what was going on and I had to make a major decision at the end, and I I just had no clue what I was picking. So um, like bugs and glitches, you mean like like tech, like not even like enemies popping in or out. You're like meaning like text and subtitles and audio issues. Yeah, that stuff oh, gets wow. a lot worse. Like I'd say seventy R mark. You start to really. I don't know what happens, but it just starts to really uh, get a lot worse. Like hard crash. I never had a hard crash before that. Yeah, I never had like, a whole mission do this before that. And I know they're patching. I know they're working really hard on patching it, um, but just be wary because I've seen some people say, oh, well, the first five hours aren't too bad. I was like, oh, just you wait. <laughs> it's like the game is a human being and every hour you put into it, it's like a year on its life. And now you're an hour 70 and this thing is like, it needs a walk yeah. to get from point A <laughs> to point B. That's a very good analogy. Yeah. I, I'm I, just I'm so scared because oh. you can't have a backup save on Xbox. 
you can right. upload to the cloud on playstation and then you can have like sort of backup saves on pc but mm-hmm. and i think that's the other thing i forgot to mention last week you don't have a manual save it's just one auto save for what? the entire game yeah like imagine skyrim didn't have an auto save or fallout didn't have or a manual save or fallout didn't have it it's and it's crazy. only one I, save slot yeah you can have multiple saves but you cannot have like you can't like save scum or anything you're like oh, i'll just reload this if my file corrupted i can just go back to here you can't do that i really wow. hope they update that because i'm very scared <laughs> yeah no what do you <laughs> think about far this on in. as an open world <laughs> like yeah kind of sewer that that, that yeah. is very strange it, you know, only an auto save for on, on an already buggy game yeah yeah i, I, I definitely like... do, do see the the resemblance to bethesda i actually was considering getting that game because of it uh, uh, nice it, yeah, I'm, wow! Like what, I, one save and, and a boring and boring protagonist that, that doesn't yeah. sound great. <laughs> it is uh, worth it, I would say, when they sort out the bugs for the parkour and the combat alone. I know that's not very Bethesda like, but it mm-hmm. is very satisfying when you're mowing down those zombies, putting all your combos together with a throwing knife and a flame. <laughs> it, it is, it's very cool. Yep. <laughs> and sorry, uh, Ryan, is what you're playing on again? Because I just want to know, like, you're not playing on PC, correct? This is the the console no, edition of the this game. Is, this is Xbox I'm playing on, and I have heard that PC is a lot worse for bugs. But at least you can have you can you can make your different saves with the PC. Interesting, because when we when we were talking last week, I know you were you were playing this pre-launch, and I was wondering if maybe there would be a day one patch that would kind of you know fix a lot of the things I was hearing you and other reporters talking about. But it seems like the answer was no. That did not happen. There was a day one patch. I haven't really seen any like on my end. But I am deep in the game, and the glitches are worse deep in the game. Yeah. So maybe they're trying to patch the beginning for newer players. Yeah, I think this is. I think it's it's the worst. Like same with Cyberpunk as well. When a game like this seems like it has so much potential, but yeah. they probably financially could not delay it any longer. Like, do you feel like if they had maybe two to six more months on this game just to polish these like last little things, the writing and the character, sometimes you can't fix that. But when it comes to technical issues, there that should be the one thing that is not an issue when gamers buy a game on day one. Yeah, like I uh, said, think, like, yeah, I think last week I said they were just they're so close and like nearly everything like the yeah. parkour is a little glitchy. Uh, the combat's a little glitchy if they just like. It took so little for it to be a, yeah. like a really good experience, but that's why I do have hope that after patches, like you said, they can't patch a better main character. Yeah. <laughs> but is there is there anything in the menu that when you're playing Dying Light Two, because there's all this stuff that you can do. You're saying side quests, main story, um, assuming collectibles, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Do you have a progress bar in menu at all that's saying, "Hey, you've done like sixty percent of everything in the game," or the are only... you just going to icon to icon? Yeah, you only sort of get progress information with your collectibles. Oh. Because there's I, nothing like you've done this many side quests and you've got this to go yeah because i really like in horizon zero dawn um how like every time you find a collectible or do a side quest it goes towards a total completion bar so horizon zero dawn um you do the first two side quests you're at 0.7 percent through the game but obviously as you do more you're at like 95.2 and as somebody who's going for like a platinum or full collectibles it's nice just having that uh percentage bar and to know how much i have left to do um it, it motivates me to finish it because I, I i'm 90 percent of the way there just got to finish off that last 10 and i've done everything that you can do in the game but, yeah i agree i like this yeah. stuff they had it in ratchet and clank as well and yeah. spyro i believe and also it yeah. helps you like see content that you might not have seen because you're like oh i've completed the game like if uh weird reference but mass effect one like i played that game so much and it wasn't <laughs> until i got the guide like two years later i realized i'd missed like two or three missions but there was no progress bar so i didn't know Oh, weird. Interesting. I wish, like, even, like, we'll talk about it in a bit, but, like, Pokemon Legends, there's side quests in that game, but sometimes I don't know where they're, they're located, and I ha- yeah. I'm i refusing to look up guides for it because I don't want to accidentally see a, a spoiler or something I'm not supposed to see, but there's a part of me that's dying because I'm missing a, a side quest right now. It's, like, number 19. I have 18. I have 20. I have everything around it. I just don't know where to find it, and it's going to bug me forever. It's going to be around some hidden corner or some hidden crevice in the main world I can't see, Yeah, but... It is nice to have that progress tracker. Um, so, are you gonna are you gonna roll credits on this thing? You think, Jessica? I mean, you're so close already. I feel like you kind of have to. I think I'm close. <laughs> <laughs> Every time you think something's gonna end, it's like, no, here's this big thing. But yeah, I, I definitely will. I'll I'll see it through to the end because I want to know. Apparently, there's a very unique way they tell you 
how you made your decisions in the game. Mm-hmm. I want to see. I want to see what that is. And I, I know I asked you last week, and you're on your first playthrough, so you didn't really have an answer. But are you compelled to play again and to choose different decisions to see the ripple effects, or is this a one and done for you? No, I'm so yeah. Like <laughs> it sounds so mean. I'm just so <laughs> uninterested in the story that I don't want. I don't even want to like what happens if you side with this person. Eh. Yeah. You know. Hey, that's how it is sometimes. So generally what I'm hearing, it's a really fun game to play. If you like playing video games, this is a good one for that. If you're looking for a character-driven, story-based adventure, I'd maybe look elsewhere. Is that fair to say? That's yeah, very fair to say. Yeah, and no, you were saying you were maybe interested in Dying Light 2. Did you play the first one at all or just not at all with the franchise? Uh, it would be my first time with the franchise. Yeah, yeah. And as I, I asked Jessica last week if you needed to play the first one before 2, and she was like, nope uh so it sounds like number two might be a good game to pick up when i see it used for like 30 to 40 dollars uh Agreed. And I have like and i have like nothing else to play <laughs> it is they do have co-op it wasn't available before launch so you can do and they have they'd be very good with putting their progress map out so it will you will have a continual like at least missions to do over time gameplay yeah. wise i don't know about story yeah, and sorry, before we totally move on, I feel like I totally like forgot you mentioned Rosario Dawson, and then I was l- <laughs> listening to a different podcast, and they mentioned it, and I was like, wait, Rosario Dawson's in this game? <laughs> How much is she in it? Is she like a, a decent part? Like, Obviously, she's the best part of the character story stuff you mm-hmm. were saying, but is she a, like a decent part of it or a cameo? Uh, so remember I was telling you last week that the first area is totally different from the second area and yeah. all the good stuff's in the second area. She's in the second area. <laughs> oh, okay. So that's get- all the good stuff. Yeah, you get the good yeah. character, uh, you get the good, uh, like, you get the power glider, you get the good traversal. Yeah. It's a better story than in the first one. Um, yeah. So, yeah, she's in, I'd say, probably two thirds, maybe a half of the game. Yeah, that's, like, a huge, like, pro for me. Like, a reason I want to check out this game is just for Rosario Dawson at this point, because anybody watching, like, Star Wars stuff, I'm just falling in love with her more and more as time goes on. She's um, the best voice actor as well. Yeah, she's amazing. Yeah, she's um, an up and coming actress. Like, like I cover yeah. a lot. Of, for those who don't know, I do entertainment a lot in addition to video games. Mm-hmm. And she plays Ahsoka in, in the new Star Wars content, and yeah. then she's very good. I think she's going to be a successful actress. Yeah, yeah, man. I remember seeing Rosario Dawson back when like Clerks yeah. Two dropped in like oh five oh six. That may have been like one wow. of the first things I saw her in. And then I know she's been like, she did Daredevil. She's like been really climbing up the pop culture zeitgeist ranks in terms of like just being a, a nerd fan favorite. <laughs> um, so I do have a little bit more about Pokemon Legends. I did. I not played that much. I had a pretty busy week, but I kind of just want to talk about more about just the game in general. I'm like 30 hours in right now. And I think last week I was super hot on the story, mostly because it was surprising me and it was doing new things. Though we're kind of at the part in a Pokemon game where they're talking in circles. Like, I'm aware of the mystery. You don't have to keep reminding me about the Chosen One and the Legacy. We're, I'm going to say, like, for the last five hours, there has been no progression. It's been like, oh, hey, here's that thing we told you at the beginning. Don't forget. So the story has become pretty backburner, which eventually usually always happens with Pokemon games and me. But the gameplay just has me coming back to it. I was saying last week, I love Pokemon, have for a long time, and this is the first time in a while I've had to rethink how to play Pokemon in such a weird and unique way. Um, I know you two have both played games in the series, so this should be uh, like comprehensible for you, but an attack like Defense Curl back in the day used to only raise your base defense stat. Now it raises both your defense stats. If you use Growl on an enemy, it will lower both their attack stats, special and normal. Um, when you end a battle against a wild Pokemon, say they poisoned you, you automatically heal all status conditions between battle. So you don't need antidotes, you don't need paralyzed heals. And I could go on and on about all these like small details that the more I play, the more I realize what a reinvention of the franchise this is. Um, even attack like pin missile, which I know I'm going into like, really nerdy Pokemon specifics right now. If you know, you know, but pin missile back in the day was an attack that would do like 20 damage five times in a row but in this game it does damage between turns you're like you're putting pins in the opponent uh in the enemy pokemon and then they receive like thorn damage every turn um the sleep status effect you don't actually fall asleep you just get drowsy and sometimes your attacks miss all these like little weird things it's so strange um but i'm really enjoying it i'm enjoying the grind and 
last week I was out here saying like, oh, you're out there doing Pokedex research. You're not really catching and battling. You're you're catching and battling. That is still part of the the main grind of the game, but you're really focusing on the research aspect of it all. You're focusing on finding these Pokemon in the wild. What are their habits? What's the male? What's the female? What do they look like differently? And yeah, it is just a very fun world to live in these days. Um, I know you guys haven't got it yet, but I think you guys are like possibly curious about this the game. So if you have any questions about Legends Arceus, let me know. Um, I'm just going to say like I'm I'm really enjoying it. I know it's February 6th as we are recording. It is my game of the year. Sorry, nobody saves the world. You have to be number two for now. Um, yeah, not much else to say. I'm I'm curious about how it's all going to wrap up. Because while I don't really care for the story right now, it is still like interesting enough to be in this kind of uh, feudal Sinnoh area and seeing its history and lore come together. But as of right now, it's kind of cool to seeing the new Pokemon, um, the new variations. Yeah, yeah, not too much more to say. Pokemon, Pokemon Legends. What is the? I haven't heard too much about the fighting. I didn't even know there was fighting in it. Is mm. is it is it still a big? So it's still turn based combat. Um, you're mostly fighting wild Pokemon. There are tr battles against trainers in this game, but they are story based. At no point are you in the wild finding trainers to battle. You're at a point in time and history where the the concept of catching Pokemon is just foreign to everyone. You drop, you show up in this world, and you have the power to throw a Pokeball, and it blows everyone's minds. It's like they've never seen somebody throw <laughs> something before. It's crazy. Um, so you're really out there setting the trail for what it's going to be the norm for every current, you know, generation Pokemon game. Um, but the Pokemon battles are really cool. If you want to catch a Pokemon in the wild, you can either just throw a Pokeball at it and hope you catch it, or you can do it the old style way of like weakening its health, uh, putting it to sleep, trying to make it easier to catch. Um, it's still turn-based, like you were saying. Um, the main difference I'm going to say is that each attack has different styles you can use them in. So we'll go for a basic attack like Tackle. You can use Tackle by itself, or you can use it in a strong style or an agile style. If you use it in agile style, it'll do a little bit less damage, but it will actually allow you to attack two turns in a row. Where a strong attack, okay. it'll do more damage, but your opponent will have the opportunity to, uh, opportunity to attack twice in a row instead. And it's just another weird thing, too, where turn-based Pokemon battles have always been one after the other. But in this game, the speed stat actually matters for your Pokemon. Even without using agile style attacks, if you have a Rattata against a Snorlax, your Rattata will probably attack three times before the Snorlax attacks once, because it's generally just a faster Pokemon than Snorlax is. So it's almost like playing like Persona now. I don't know. Pokemon is finally adapting uh, pretty old like JRPG mechanics at this point into its franchise, and it's cool to see them do so. Um, the thing that blew my mind about battling is that you can move your player around while you're in a Pokemon battle. You're not in a static area. The battle takes place on the world map where you find the Pokemon. It doesn't transition to a battle phase or a different area. If you find a Buizel in the sand, you're fighting it in the sand. If you fight a Burmy under a tree, it's going to be under the tree. Um, and then while your Pokemon's attacking, you can run around behind the other Pokemon. You get a full 360 camera character control, which is very cool. That's cool. It just... kind of reminded me a wee bit of Nino Kuni, but that did yeah. take you to a like a little battle area, even if it did have the aesthetics of where you were. That sounds cool. Yeah. So like it's a, it's a minor thing, but what I'll do is if I know my attack's about to finish off the enemy Pokemon, I'll start running in the direction of my next goal while my Pokemon's still battling over there. I'm like, okay, ah. you slam through over. I'll be over here. <laughs> Catch up when you're done. Um. So the battling is still there, but it is so it is so minuscule, especially like the trainer battles, and. Because everyone's so afraid of catching Pokemon, you have like 25 Pokemon by the end of the third hour of this game, and your rival has two, and I'm at hour 30. Yeah. Okay. Because there's there's just so afraid of them. They, they're just these little birds and fish that might kill you, I guess. <laughs> I mean, they could. Charizard could definitely kill you like that. <laughs> and just like, like kind of transitioning, they talk about death so much in this game. Like I I've been killed by Pokemon in this game. Like game over screen. Wow. This, Ursa, this Ursa ring just ate your face. Like, <laughs> it is terrifying. And um, I've seen some clips about, like, Chansey's chasing people. Like, just the Pokemon. I saw that. The, yeah. Terrifying. The, the nicest, sweetest Pokemon are now the things of nightmares. 
that song's like just chancy. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to be the, the Pokemon Center Pokemon, not the mm. nightmare. But when it comes like like I'm saying, you guys are longtime Pokemon fans. And I, I'm really excited for you guys to get to play it because I really am eager to hear more opinions about it. But like everything you thought you knew about this 20 plus year old franchise has been turned on its head. And as somebody who's loved the franchise for so long, finding those changes and being like, that's a good change. Oh, I've been wanting that since I was 12. I've been wanting this since I was playing Diamond and Pearl back in the day. Like, and I was saying last week, this is this is not the open world Pokemon game that I think we all want, but it's taking the right steps in that direction. I think the next generation of home Nintendo consoles, we could really start seeing, imagine like, a Xenoblade Chronicles-esque open world for a Pokemon game. They have Monolith Soft right there. They could do something like that. Um, the, of course, graphically, it's not great. That's the the main consent or uh, agreement with everyone. Uh, Pokemon run at five frames a second if they're like two feet away from you. But I'm going to try and roll credits this week. That's going to be my main goal is to be Pokemon Legends. And then hopefully I'll be ready for Horizon after that. So... Yeah, if there's something else about Pokemon, um, I just want to just kind of like just reconfirm how much I'm loving and enjoying it. Um, Do you have any questions, Noah? Because I've just got one more. Uh, yeah, so I remember last time, Kyle, we talked about um, how I was kind of expecting the story of that game to kind mm. of be the legends that we already know. Is that the case or is there more that you didn't know before that you're finding in that game? So I think they're saving a lot of that for the end game. They have alluded to a lot of the kind of mysteries and even some of the locations and people from Sinnoh that you you know from the main Diamond and Pearl games. They're alluding to the history of it, but I still don't have the full picture. It's like they gave me the outside corner pieces of the puzzle, but not the like center pieces. So not really. I don't really have any answers for that. But I actually owe you an apology because we were on this podcast and I asked you about your starter pick and you said Oshawott. And I said, dude, there's no Oshawa in this game. It's Piplup. And two days later, I found out I was so wrong. So on the podcast publicly, I would like to apologize for you. <laughs> you were right. I was wrong. Uh, uh, that's okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, if I get it, I'll, I'll pick Oshawa then. Yes. Uh, I'm pretty sure I don't have one of those, but I, but I have a Deucey uh, Decidueye and, yeah. and I think I have a type. No, what, what is it? That's the fire one. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, oh, the, um, Chim oh, no, Cyndaquil. Oh, the oh one this one? Cool. The, yeah, yeah, I think I have a Typhlosion. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot to mention this. This uh, Pokemon Legends is compatible with Pokemon Home. So if you have Pokemon that are in this Pokedex from like Sun and Moon, X and Y, I think going all the way back to some of the older, older Pokemon games, you can bring them up to Legends and you can bring Pokemon from Pokemon Legends down to your other games as well. And there is like, in, I feel like Shinies are a lot easier to get in Legends than other games. So... Hmm. For shiny hunters who want to get certain Pokemon shiny variants in their other games, it should be pretty easy. Uh, what was your other question, though, Jessica? Oh, I just wanted to know about it because I've seen uh, lots of cute videos about people like taking their Pokemon out and letting them interact with each other. And yes. <laughs> one of my favorite ones has just been Mr. Mime. Mining, sitting down <laughs> and taking a drink. <laughs> Have you seen yeah. any of that in it? I So I will like actively go out to find Mr. Mime so I can watch them drink oh. tea. <laughs> like It is so good. <laughs> Um, and like, it feels like a reference to Detective Pikachu, which had like a whole scene with Mr. Mime drinking oh, tea, being sassy. Oh, yeah. So like the Pokemon can leave their Pokeball and you, you can look at them in a, in a static position, but they don't follow you, which does feel like a missed opportunity. You have the Pokemon animations for them moving in the open world. Why can't my Ponyta follow me? Why can't my Magikarp splash around behind me while I walk around? I just want to see that happen. That's why. But that's like another complaint. It's like you can look at your Pokemon, you can like pet them. I wouldn't really say pet, um, mm. but they don't follow you, which is like after doing that from Soul Silver, Heart Gold to like the Let's Go games, it's kind of yeah, weird that they, would, they wouldn't have it here. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Pokemon Legends Arceus. Um, I have more Pokemon stuff to talk about later, but we'll get there when we get there. Uh, so we have a Google Doc about the games that we want to talk about. And I was so happy when Noah wrote down Call of Duty Black Ops 2 as the game he's been playing this week. Noah, what inspired you to go back to Call of Duty Black Ops 2? Well, that was my favorite Call of Duty multiplayer. I don't think anyone's really ever executed it perfectly. But it, I guess it's just a hard thing to balance. But I think that one got the closest 
Mm -hmm. And it's one of the only ones I was ever really any good at. Um, I've never been good at just pointing and shooting in like any game, but, yeah. but in that one, I found some strategies that I could make work. So I had, so I've had success. You know, I usually finish with more kills and deaths and nice. Yeah. That, that's real. That's real fun. Um, and you're playing it uh, on backwards compatible Xbox series X, correct? Actually on the Xbox one. Xbox but, one. Okay. Yeah. I, I didn't realize it was backwards compatible because because I guess when it first, like when the backwards compatibility still was a new thing, it wasn't. Mm -hmm. But then they added more games to it. And I was like, wait, Black Ops 2 is on there. <laughs> then my eyes lit up. And I was like, yes, I'm back. I'm the, I'm the be the camper <laughs> that everyone despises again. <laughs> hey, somebody's you know got a camp. Yeah, you know if what? If no scoping is allowed, then yeah. then what I do is allowed. That that's that's the major exploit of Black Ops Two. It is the snipers are are mm -hmm. way too OP. And actually, in Fallout Four, my I have a sniper rifle like with a drum mag that can shoot like like all the way like across to the the Commonwealth that, that I jokingly named Black Ops Two because of that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, when I look back on my time with Black Ops 2, I have so many memories of respawning and being shot five seconds later by a sniper. Like, yeah. some really fond, <laughs> strong memories of just dying. Right. Um, when it comes to the state of the online servers, we were talking about this a little bit before we went live. And just, like, in terms of... You you were having to, like, uh, file some complaints against some modders, it sounds like. Uh, yeah, you know what? It, it happens with games that that aren't policed quite as much as they once were. And yeah, it's unfortunate. Like I'm, I'm not opposed to modding at all if it's not mm. affecting anyone else's experience, but no one should be tampering with a public match. It's just yeah, with... inconsiderate. Mm -hmm. it's something that, you know, it's something that someone with an unfortunate life would do for attention. So, so yeah, if someone's doing that, like, yeah, just report them. Then Microsoft will take care of it eventually. Yeah, well, that's is it crossplay then? then? Uh, I be I believe it is through the Xbox. Uh, like I think I do play with anyone that's on another Xbox console. I'm not sure if it if it's oh, PC okay. compatible though. Interesting. I was going to ask about matchmaking. If you were um, finding matches quickly, or if it was taking a while to find matches. Uh, quicker than. Like for a while, I still played Halo Reach, even after mm -hmm. it was 10 years old. That yeah. I'd say quicker than that. But the yeah. thing is, you may end up leaving a match immediately because of a modder. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably easier to find a Black Ops 2 match right now than even like a Vanguard match. Um, <laughs> I, I'm just saying that because I have not heard anybody talk about Vanguard since that game has come out. Um, yeah, we were talking before we went live just about like kind of the Call of Duty memories that we have. And Black Ops 2 is... Yeah, just over 10 years old, which is crazy to believe. I would have been in high school, and it's the game that every single person, uh, even the principal, was probably talking about Call of Duty Black Ops 2 on the morning announcements. Um, I love that zombies mode so, so much. Or not the zombies mode, really. I guess I just like the multiplayer maps in 2 the most. And we were talking before, I think Black Ops 2 is the, the campaign that I last had any interest in. I don't remember the name of the antagonist, um, but that guy is just like a debaucherous, almost like Far Cry-esque villain that I was so, so ready and eager to take down. <laughs> yeah, um, he was good. You mean uh, Raul Menendez, I think yeah, his name is. It, yeah, yeah that, so. that was a good campaign. Yeah, because he has like a whole like tragic backstory. I want, let me, it's been 10 years since I played Black Ops 2 on my Wii U gamepad back in the day. But I remember having like a pretty like, him having an actual strong origin story about why he was evil, I believe it involved the loss of a family member on his part. Yeah. Um, yeah, I really love that story. And then I remember, I think Ghosts was after Black Ops 2, and it starts off in space, and it gets really weird from there. Yeah, how did they fall so hard from Black Ops 2 to Ghosts? Yeah. Well, well, wasn't Ghosts the first uh, sledgehammer one? I don't think that was Triarch, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, and Black Ops 2 is, is, uh... is Triarch, right? Uh, yeah, Black Ops is Triarch. Uh, uh, Modern Warfare is uh, Infinity War. Then I think Ghosts and Advanced War, the Advanced Warfare is our Infinity Ward. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I've always preferred Treyarch. So, like, my first Call of Duty experience was uh, Call of Duty 3 on the Xbox 360. Nice. And I know everyone was going on about Call of Duty 2 being, like, it was a great campaign, but, man, did I love Call of Duty 3, especially yeah. online. It was good memories. Yeah. I feel like if you're not playing Halo, you're probably playing Call of, one of the Call of Duties at that point on yeah. online. I was playing um, both. Honestly, it was, between, <laughs> it was between just switching between Halo 3 and I think it was Modern Warfare or Modern oh. Warfare 2 at the time. Oh, it's... I thought, you had, I thought you had two monitors, two controllers, <laughs> one hand for controller. <laughs> if only. Yeah, no sniper or uh, what? Are they, what's it called when you kill somebody without the sniper? No, no scope. No scope. I know yeah. Noah just said it. I just uh, yeah, no scope. I'm only halfway through my coffee today. That's why I couldn't think of the word scope. Um, no, we were talking about it before. It's kind of like we were kind of just reminiscing about early Call of Duty memories, and I was telling these guys that I personally have an association of Call of Duty and Nintendo, which is so so weird. Um, I think I even had Modern Warfare for the DS, which is a bad way of playing Modern Warfare. What was that Um, like? uh, It was about 16 pixels. Um, I don't, it was not first person. I think it's, oh man. You know what, now that you mentioned it, I played Call of Duty on my mobile phone (laughs) way back. And it was like a top down, like, you like you said, like, like eight pixels on screen. Yeah. Like you couldn't aim properly. Like the DS is weird because they like there's an Assa- there's an Assassin's Creed game for DS. Like the DS was so successful, people wanted to make their IP work on it. It almost never did unless it was Mario <laughs> or Pokemon. But bef- like my last two Call of Duties was Call of Duty Black Ops for the Wii, in which I had the Wii Zapper, which you got with um, Link's crossbow training. So I was doing like Time Crisis esque zombies in Kindertoten, and I remember having like the uh, like the Wi-Fi stick for my Wii so I could play with friends. It had no built-in internet you had to use like a weird ethernet adapter cord for it wow (laughs) and then uh black ops 2 when that came out i had my wii u but i also had like this really crappy old box tv that like did not make games look fun uh so i used to lay in bed and just play call of duty multiplayer and zombies on my wii u gamepad for probably until my gamepad just died so two to three hour sessions of just uh also one thing i just remembered saying it I think Black Ops 2 for the Wii U had gyro controls, gyro, gyro, gyro? Um, and that actually made it a lot easier to kill people. It's the same thing you use for Splatoon, where you can move the gamepad to aim, and it actually made it a lot easier to get headshots. So maybe hmm. Nintendo was the better platform to play it on. I don't think so, but maybe. <laughs> maybe there is. Maybe there's a whole discourse out there of like, no, if you want to play this professionally, you got to do it on the Wii U gamepad. Yeah. <laughs> um, I know you're going back to Black Ops 2, Noah. Is, are you up to date with Call of Duty or did you drop off around a certain point? I dropped off. I I think it was uh, either Ghosts or the first Advanced Warfare. Or, or Yeah, it's the first Advanced Warfare was the last one that I liked. I, it's mm-hmm. not... A favorite of mine but i found that to be a fun multiplayer and that campaign i thought was okay then then the ghosts uh game came out and that campaign i thought like it was a little far-fetched that mm-hmm. you know a well-told story ne- nevertheless but that multiplayer like i remember like spawning in at like for one match and i never played another i was on this massive map like think you know, like typical Call of Duty tactics. I was like walking around thinking I'm the walk around this edge and someone's going to shoot me. But I was walking around this huge map, not finding anyone that was like, this is terrible. <laughs> so, yeah, so I I did not continue playing Call of Duty yeah. Ghosts and that I, I haven't really stayed up to date that didn't like Black Ops Free that yeah, nothing about that game really resonated with me. It's just way too different. <laughs> I think a and lot then, of people uh, Vanguard don't you need yeah. like a, a massive subscription for that? Well, yeah, you need that and it comes with Warzone and it has like a yeah, and you can also buy it piecemeal as well where you can buy just the campaign. I think I could think you can buy just the multiplayer. Um I, uh, I believe. I know they they did that with the this? Cold War. I don't huh. know. Did you did you say you needed a, a subscription? For Vanguard? Vanguard. For pieces. So you can buy it in pieces. I didn't know that. I believe so, because like Warzone is their battle royale mode that's just kind of with all of them now. Um, but I do believe, and also like in terms of downloading as well, because these Call of Duty games, if you get the full package, you're looking at like 200 oh gigabytes sometimes. So if Ooh. you just want to buy it and install zombies, you can. If you just want to buy and install multiplayer, you can. If you're the freak who wants to buy and install the campaign, you can do that too if you want. <laughs> so I, I I do think you can do that. Um, but man, yeah, I think 
when I asked most people, when did you drop off Call of Duty? Ghosts to uh, Black Ops 3 era is usually what people would I hear. That's my story as well. Yeah. Black Ops 3 was the last very good experience I had with a Call of Duty game. Yeah, yeah that, that whole AI thing they, they tried, like it, it, AI is a great topic. It just, it just doesn't suit Call of Duty yeah. at all. Like, like the, like Black Ops was meant to be sequential. Then they just mm. kind of dropped like went in this really weird direction with it and tried to make to maintain some sort of canon with it it just didn't work yeah it's like trying to make the zelda timeline make sense like no no all these call of duty games they all they all make sense they're all tied together soaps and all of them yeah and also a bit back to what we were saying about you, you need a good protagonist that black mm. ops free protagonist was terrible he, he had no name yeah like, he was a nameless person who just represents you and yeah, it was just not good <laughs> i'm not sure if like these two actually like correlate to each other but wasn't it around um uh the one after black ops 2 Ad advanced warfare is that when they started doing like a lot of celebrity stunt casting in their games and like obviously the first one was kevin spacey mm -hmm. but isn't every call of duty now like oh we got the guy from avatar in this one we got terry cruz in this one conor mcgregor so wasn't he in one was it Conor McGregor? Ronda Rousey's probably in one somewhere. Like, <laughs> I do wonder if there's any, like, them trying to get these big name celebrities in their games that they kind of lost the point of Call of Duty, perhaps. To me, they definitely did with zombies because I remember playing zombies in uh, was it World at War, it was called, uh, when yeah. it was originally in, and then Black Ops and Black Ops 2. Like, it was incredible. And then they just made it so convoluted. They made it like really arcadey and i know it's like a zombie mood but it actually yeah. was pretty pretty tense when you were playing it i remember yeah. like when those when those dogs came in i was like oh my god this is terrifying when you're boarding uh, up windows and yeah, yeah i just it went it's the same whenever titanfall came out and call of duty tried to do the wall running and all as well they just tried to see what the trend was, was like oh we got to keep up like forgetting what made call yeah. of duty so great for everyone yeah yeah i, I totally agree like I, I think titanfall came out and they're like we got to do giant mech suits and wall running now mm -hmm. <laughs> um yeah, Call of Duty, it, it, it is, I don't get nostalgic over Call of Duty very often, but talking about it with you guys, it is like, man, I had some some really freaking good times with that series, and despite not playing anything but Warzone on and off for the last few years, it'd be cool if maybe um, Microsoft's involvement with Activision could produce a Call of Duty that would kind of grasp the general public and our, our interest as well back in the franchise. Um so Call of Duty uh, Black Ops 2, some fun nostalgia there. There's one more game for us to break down. Jessica's playing the Life is Strange remaster. And if she wants to tell us what that's all about and what she's playing it on, there we go. Yeah, so I'm playing Life is Strange Remastered on the Xbox Series X. Mm -hmm. um, I think it might be an Xbox One version, though. Uh, it is, I think it's $40 in America, <clears throat> £32 over here. And... Mm -hmm. It's kind of like exactly, I don't know if either of you played Life is Strange before. Yeah, yeah I have. It, like, so it's the same, it's the same game. They haven't really changed anything. It's still mm. got that painfully awkward dialogue. Like, <laughs> I Hello? thought, yeah, I thought it wasn't that bad. Honestly, I was like, people are probably overreacting. It's hella every two seconds. No, hella people, this, hella that. <laughs> people were hella underreacting to it. Oh like, honestly. God. Wowzer. Wowzer. Shackle bra. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Like, what is going on? And the, my personal weirdest line ever, I don't know how it came in, uh, Max is taking a picture of a squirrel and she's like, say nut for the camera. How <laughs> long <laughs> is this game? Uh, so They're trying, they're trying. Yeah, I, but see, from going playing True Colors, I played Life is Strange True Colors yeah. to this, that man, did they improve. I know True yeah. Colors was, was uh, Deck 9 and not Don't Nod, but it is so much better. It's like you're actually just experiencing a really good story told in a video game format versus this is just like uh we're a bunch of 80 year olds we don't know how people talk <laughs> when yeah. they're young so here's a bunch of hellas and wowzers um I, but apart, only, apart from that no yeah, go the ahead only channel they have the only channel they have in that uh what's it called newport bay what are they what's the name of the arcadia the, bay arcadia bay the only channel they have there is mtv from the 90s <laughs> so that that's all they know is hella no doubt <laughs> Not even. Uh, it's like, do you, when, do you know when people, when someone's like, oh, I fed an AI all the Harry Potter books and it came up with one? I fed an AI <laughs> 90s dialogue and here's what it came up with. That's what I it fed feels an, like. I fed an AI a season of Degrassi Junior High and this is what it came out with. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, two quick so, questions. 
Is the no, remaster yeah, just the first game or is it the first one and before the storm? Yeah, before the storm is included as well. I haven't played started to play it as well. I haven't even sorry started even talking about um the actual remaster. So it, mm. it's the same game you've got. It actually it is a pretty nice improved graphics because I've got the original on, so I was able to compare it and I was like, yeah, they've done a good job. Mm-hmm. It does have again playing buggy games it had some performance issues mm-hmm. and it's just weird that because they already delayed this one as well it was supposed to come out with the ultimate edition of true colors like you bought it and you got this remastered with it so they delayed yeah. it for about six months maybe a little That's less crazy. Uh, and it's still the frame rate like really dips like it's yeah. so noticeable whenever you're cutting from gameplay into a cutscene, it looks so bad it's got looks like it's got like a filter from like it goes really bright <laughs> when you're watching yeah. it, it kind of takes you out of it a wee bit uh i got a couple of glitches where i go to pick something up and i'd suddenly be in another room i was like okay how did that happen but yeah. it's nowhere near as bad as dying light like it's it's, it's obviously playable but that's I, good just at the moment i don't think like it would be worth it for someone to buy it before they patched it like just maybe hold off a little bit if you've got the original the original still holds up really well I, and, also and... i just want to <laughs> I was fine with uh, it's um, Ashley Birch that does Chloe Price's voice. She's yeah. great. I love Ashley Birch. We were talking about this last week. She's a mm-hmm. fantastic voice actor. Yeah. Man, do I hate I, I hate Chloe. She is a bad character. You she, do you want to have like the good ending? Good ending with Chloe. Yeah. You've just got to like forget about everybody else in that game and only focus on her. Nobody else matters, but but you and Chloe at the end of the day. Yeah, it um, is. I didn't realize it back then, but I'm like, man. Yeah, I, I usually I usually go for that ending without like spoiling anything obviously for people who are interested in playing it like I usually go for the ending you're alluding to and yeah mm-hmm. you kind of you got to kind of be a jerk sometimes to to achieve that to everyone um, you're you're replaying this game right this is this isn't your first time through it yeah my it's actually only my second time replaying but yeah oh very cool yeah this is I probably so life is strange is weird for me it is the game I bought my first non-nintendo console for Oh. So I will always have a strong fondness for Life is Strange. I worked at a used video game store. I I re- I watched my sister play the first season of Telltale's The Walking Dead, and I've always loved adventure games. And I heard so much about Life is Strange, and I guess at the time I was really into Alt-J. So I was like, ooh, Alt-J has a song in Life is Strange. So I bought a used PS3 for like $70. I went home, I downloaded, I think I bought, I think I brought home Uncharted 1 and Life is Strange, and that's what I had. So... I always look back fondly on um, the story of Max and um, kind of just like also how dark that story gets um, at the end. It it really comes off as like kind of a teen drama with some bubbly music and some high school discourse. But really, when you get to the last episode of Life is Strange, it it can it, there's like some content warnings that need to be. Even the one be before it as well, like something happens in episode four and it's not quite like how it was in the previous mm-hmm. episodes. I'm, I've just got to that point at the moment. It, yeah. You're right, it changes from this could be on MTV in the 90s, <laughs> early 2000s to, oh, you're going there, okay. Well, I, it is a game as well that is like, they do not try and hide their illusions. Like, they're li- every car has a license plate, and I'm pretty sure it will say Twin Peaks. It will say Breaking Bad. Like, every license, like everybody in this town yeah. has a TV show as their license plate. X-Files, <laughs> you name it. Is yeah, I came across... Plate. A receipt for somebody bought with Amelia Pond, so from a Doctor Who reference thrown in there as well. Yeah, yeah. So like David Lynch, Kafka, like all this kind of weird supernatural stuff is in Life is Strange. Um, I'm looking. I still have not played True Colors, which was Keen Gamer's Game of the Year last year. Um, I'm just waiting to kind of for a price drop, I guess, on it. Uh, maybe have a harder time dropping eighty bucks on an adventure game than I used to. Um, it is I'm a very really- good, very good game. Uh, yeah. I think oh, it's hard to say because I have such fond memories of this first one, but True mm-hmm. Colors, I think, kind of like just perfected everything together. And you didn't have to wait for the episodes either, which made yeah. it a lot better. And and I really liked um I really liked this the the DLC for the first game as well, starring Chloe uh, before the storm. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's actually and that's that's Deck Nine as well that did that game. Yep. Um, I've not played Life is Strange two either, but man, I really just love the story of Max and Chloe and Arcadia Bay um when do you know when these come out are they already out the remaster yes yes yeah so they're already out but it's been delayed on switch so it's out for playstation pc uh, xbox and actually stadia i think that's uh that's t- two for two for games that you talk about that's been delayed on switch yeah. Dying <laughs> 2 and life is strange currently i like slightly buggy releases that have been delayed <laughs> on switch <laughs> that's, my, that's that, my job games that the switch can barely handle <laughs> <laughs> um so that was 
it for the games we're playing. We actually went a bit longer on that than I thought, but that was fun. Uh, we talked a lot about Dying Light 2, Pokemon Legends Arceus, Call of Duty Black Ops 2, and the Life is Strange Remaster. We have a few new stories to get to, and then we'll hop into our topic. Last week, or well, not last week, I guess two weeks ago, we had a whole episode about Microsoft picking up Activision and what a big deal that was and what is Sony going to do next? Well, Sony made a chess move, but I don't know if it's a good chess move. They kind of just like moved their pawn up a space. Sony bought Bungie, which I'm, I'm sure anybody listening to this is well aware. Bungie is really associated with Xbox and Halo in its heyday. Obviously, nowadays they have gone independent or they went independent to create Destiny, the multi-platform uh, online shooter game. Um, Sony has bought Bungie, but at the moment they're letting Bungie remain an independent developer. They're going to be able to put out their games on whatever console they want, but Sony Sony owns them. I don't play a lot of Destiny, no or Jessica. I'm not sure if you guys have played, but what do you guys make of of this this new deal? Also, it should be stated it was only for 3.6. I, I say only because uh, <laughs> how Microsoft was what 70 billion. Yeah. Yeah. So it was only 3.6 billion dollars for Bungie. What do you guys think? Yeah, well, it, it is a surprising move. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially because of the history with Microsoft. Like, yeah, for for those who don't know, Bungie was the original Halo developer for for many years up the first until three Halo. games, right? Uh, was it? And they might have done the first uh, the, the first anniversary edition for Halo mm-hmm. One. And then after that, I think I think they were done. They went to make Destiny, which. I did play Destiny for a month or so. It wasn't really my favorite thing. Yeah, so I that. It, yeah. What what a surprising move! And if they're if they're still letting them produce games for for any platform, then then what are they getting out of it? Yeah, that's kind of yeah. the question. I know a decent chunk of that three point six billion is going towards developers staying at Bungie, because um, there is a. When companies like this make a big acquisition or make a big deal, a lot of them will go independent and just start a new studio so they can, you know, have their creative control. They can start fresh with a new IP. Maybe they can sell another company down the line. But I think about one billion of the dollars that they that Sony had spent was to keep Bungie developers on. So I don't know if they're going to try and have Bungie work on Destiny as well as a Sony IP. Obviously, I heard people talking about, oh, we're going to get Killzone again. Or, oh, we're going to get um, Resistance back. I don't know if you're putting Bungie on Killzone or Resistance, personally. But Noah's right. I don't know what Sony's long-term plan is. And, like, was this their their comeback to Microsoft's thing? Or was this something that they had talked about for a bit? Um, yeah, I don't know. Jessica, any any thoughts on this? Yeah, I... Uh... I think it's a fairly big deal for Sony. I, I think I mentioned last week about about like like market capital i think that's the name of what Mm -hmm. both of them so this is basically like the gaming division of sony saying i am going to buy an activision blizzard the way their money works yeah um so i I could see why this is a big deal for them i don't think it was a direct response to the activision blizzard stuff because it would have to have been talked Mm -hmm. about for a bit but it seems massive to me but it does seem like that way because oh we've bought the call of duty developers and then now sony have bought the destiny developers yeah. like that's that's huge um and also it's, i thought it was a bit weird because like you said xbox owned bungie and then activision blizzard i believe or just activision owned bungie and yeah. they went independent both times and now they're like oh no now we're going to be with sony it seems very weird for bungie to keep doing this <laughs> yeah <laughs> to, go, think... to go independent and then get bought up again yeah i don't think activision ever owned bungie i believe they partnered up just to help uh, fund and release does destiny but i don't think they were ever actually owned by activision i think it was a yeah. partnership i remember hearing a story end. that they were very happy when that partnership ended <laughs> yes yeah <me laughs> yeah too. um yeah. i did i did play destiny for a bit and destiny 2 for a couple of months i was mm-hmm. fairly into it uh i think it's a really cool game something else must have just caught my attention at the time and i know bungie are developing uh an original ip yeah a first person shooter so i could see maybe that going exclusive on sony i uh they said they were going to remain what well, the option to be cross-platform, mm. but I can see a world where that would be a Sony exclusive. And I think as well, like Bungie, um, when Halo came out, it was a great game, obviously, but the tech behind the game 
was one of the things that was uh, mostly like uh, people loved the tech of Halo. As it, sh- it shoots well, it plays well, it feels good to play. And I think Bungie has a reputation all the way up to Destiny 2 of having great feeling games. If you want a great yeah. feeling gun, the sounds, all that stuff, I think that's what Sony's buying. I think they're not really buying Bungie the team and their games. The technology that Bungie has, if they can start implementing that into the next Uncharted or the next, um, like, anything, Ratchet and Clank, like, if they can make games feel better and more fun to play, I think that's probably what they're aspiring for. I did obviously read hot takes that, like, oh, now Xbox has Call of Duty and Sony will have Destiny. I don't think it's going to be a 50-50 split. Choose your your shooting game. They're really bananas, bananas and apples. They really aren't the same thing at all. If Sony had bought Medal of Honor, maybe there'd be a little bit but more of a discussion about why they're the same, but I just don't think so. And then me and Destiny, last time I played Destiny, Peter Dinklage was in it. So that should tell wow. you as much as you need to know about my <laughs> time with Destiny. You played it earlier than me then. I never played it when he was in it. Yeah, I, I think I played it like shortly after launch. And then I was like, I'm just gonna go play Fallout 4 instead. Yeah, it was. It went on a journey to become a very good game. And the second one, actually, I was like, they repeated it. Yeah. But we can we can speculate as much as we want. I think same with all the other acquisitions we've seen of uh, recently. We won't know the actual effect of this for another year or two, I assume. It's it's news right now, but we really don't know what the end result is going to be until uh, Sony decides to tell us. Um, so Sony has bought Bungie. This is crazy. Um, Rockstar had the smallest, most minor tweet about GTA 6. And I think it has now blown up to be the most popular tweet in the gaming industry of the year so far. Mind you, it's been like five weeks, but still. <laughs> um, I mean, after two huge acquisitions, that's a pretty big deal. Yeah, totally. I wonder if anybody would try and buy Rockstar. I wonder if they've been approached being like, how much? How much? <laughs> you assume, um, this is just like off topic. You assume Rockstar would go more or less than Bethesda? Like we're oh. playing prices right right now. More. Well, well more. I'd assume. It, well, they bought more than just Bethesda, and they bought Zenimax Online Studios. Yep. Uh, um, as well as ID, um, like a lot, like a lot of the Bethesda studios, right? You have Tango. You have so many other like developers there as well. I still think there's no way they wouldn't be asking for like Activision type money yeah. for like the like, just yeah, GTA I, license alone. You know. Bethesda has a yeah, like, quantity agree. of games, but Rockstar has like the quality, right? Like that's what you're paying for. Um, but anyway, they had a tweet. It was, there's like nothing here, but I'm going to read it out. Um, With the unprecedented longevity of GTA 5, we know many of you have been asking us about a new entry in the GTA series. With every new project we embark on, our goal is always to significantly move beyond what we have previously delivered. And we are pleased to confirm that active development for the next entry in the GTA series is well underway. We look forward to sharing more as soon as we are ready. So please stay tuned to Rockstar for more news. They didn't even say GTA 6 here. (laughs) Like (laughs) the next installment in the GTA series, GTA Online 2, is coming to a console near you. Um, Get ready for so many things going. Maybe it's not going to be GTA 6. Maybe it's a remake. Maybe it's this. Just because they didn't say GTA 6. (laughs) (laughs) Rockstar is releasing releasing their official uh, remasters of the San Andreas, GTA 3, and Vice City remasters. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, this is incredibly subtle. And same thing with like a lot of the news we talk about here. We won't know what goes on in a bit. Are you guys eager for GTA 6 or any um, any idea of what you would want it to be? Yeah, so my history with GTA is it's something that I'd play at a friend's house sometimes. But what, when those were coming out, uh, well, not GTA 5, that... That probably would would have been after I was a certain age, but for many years my parents just wouldn't let me get that game because mm, yeah. they, they hear Grand Theft Auto and they're like, "Nope, nope, you're you're not playing that." And yep. you know, I I was a you know a little nerdy kid, so I was like, <laughs> oh, "All right, that's how it's going to be." Yep. So yeah, so I don't have much experience with it, but GTA Five is one of the most played games ever. It's right up there with Skyrim as one mm-hmm. of the older games that's still massively played so, massively played and ported to every single thing you can imagine like yeah it, yeah just like that so I, I do believe um what what triggered them to have this comment was they were talking about the the, the ps5 and xbox series x versions of gta 5 because of course they're porting that game once again 
Um, but in that statement about the remasters of GTA five, uh, they were like, oh, by the way, we're working on the next installment of GTA, which I think would be really cool if they um, branched out and did like another side story similar to like Chinatown uh, stories or even like um, some of the more like character focused. Like, I know it's going to be a big open world, but I actually really like the smaller scope and more character focused GTA titles like for the DS and the PSP. So I don't have I don't like, I don't have a lot going on here myself. It's going to be good music, good driving. Um, boy, if you thought you had a lot to do in Dying Light 2, mm-hmm. imagine how much you'll have to do in GTA 6. I want them to just kind of shake things up a little bit because they did say in that, that thing that they're, it's it's very ambitious. I hope they don't just mean like it's bigger. Like Because yeah. I started kind of go off GTA at around 4 and 5. Like the stories just mm-hmm. really didn't grab me. The protagonists didn't grab me. But I love GTA uh, 3. By mm. City, San Andres, they're so good. And you, you kind of, for me, you kind of lost a couple of elements that you had in San Andres um, coming into four mm-hmm. and five. I just want them to do something different, maybe like not in the USA or something. Like just yeah, try a totally. different story, try a different location, just something. <laughs> just try something new. I mean, like, I think mm. some of the best games and movies are ones that take risks and try new things. And I think GTA 6 will be popular no matter what. Why not change one of the the variables of your product? Yeah, just look at Pokemon. Everyone's loving yeah. Arceus for changing it, and it's still selling incredibly well, even though they changed uh, it. So you want GTA Legends, Trevor? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Trevor. Catch. No, actually, no, no, no. <laughs> you play as a baby Trevor, setting ants on fire, you know, messed up like, childhood. That's different, yeah. <laughs> that's different. I'm the same as you, though. Since it came out, like, 10 years ago, I've tried to play the GTA Five story, like, eight times, I always get a little bit farther than the last time, but I've never rolled credits on it. Yeah, I just same. like I just I just burn out at a certain point. It's hard to keep track of what's going on. Focus on one character instead of three. I like the three characters, but it's hard to keep track of what they're all doing at the same time. But time will tell, as it always does. But this might be a little bit shorter. I think um we all remember Google Stadia, right? Google at one point, I want to say 2018, was getting very serious about possibly entering the video game space um wanting to compete against sony and microsoft and nintendo um at one point there is speculation that they were going to announce a console but it ended up being stadia which was pretty much a cloud-based streaming gaming service um when they announced stadia they had i maybe you remember jessica did they have amy hennig come out and be like i am working on a game for stadia no wow i actually i didn't know that did she when they announced stadia they had developers coming up being like i have opened a new studio where they were going to have a Stadia exclusive and they're going to be exclusive games and their own uh, ecosystem and all that stuff. It might've been her or somebody else, but um, yeah, Stadia is going away. Google is very unhappy with the, um, the status and the popularity of Stadia. They did put a lot of money into its tech though. And they're now looking to shop Stadia around to companies like Peloton and um, other people who would use a cloud-based streaming service um have you guys ever touched stadia do you guys ever think about touching stadia noah no but <laughs> uh, well i like microsoft and nintendo exclusive so it, mm-hmm. it would have taken something pretty good to get me to pay money for for stadia <laughs> yeah I think they needed they needed a game. They needed like an exclusive game because I think when they came out, they were like, "We have four games that you can stream in 4K on your browser." And I was like, "Okay, I can I can I can play it on my console." Like, I <laughs> yeah, can exactly. Just do that. Like, why would I risk going on the cloud gaming, paying for the subscription service when I can just download it on a console that I have? And you're right, yeah. they really needed just. I mean, if there was an Amy Hennig game that they released on Stadia, absolutely, I'd pay for at least a subscription yeah. just get that. But they, you're right, they just they had the games you could get in other places. And I have yep. really bad internet, so there's no way mm-hmm. I was taking a risk on Stadia. And I was I was always curious about it. Like I always remember checking out reviews of games on Stadia to see how they compare to console versions. And I want to say like Mortal Kombat 11 was like reviewed pretty poorly on Stadia because it had really bad uh, netcode. Like, you can't oh really? Play f- I I heard yeah. that the opposite of this actually. Sorry to interrupt, but oh, okay. Cyberpunk when it came out was apparently the best version you could play was on Stadia for yeah, some reason. I, yeah. So high highs and low lows. I think mm-hmm. it was like playing and playing an online multiplayer fighting game uh-huh. that's on a streaming game wasn't very good. But like I think a lot of the single player games. I think I know people who played Red Dead Two on Stadia that had a good time. Um, one thing to know, like Google was really out there being like, you can play on your phone, you can play it on your TV. I think Microsoft has kind of just come in and just like 
they own that market now. Yeah. Uh, is it is it called X Play? Is what they do? Uh, it's just I think it's just Cloud Gaming yeah, now, I, but it used to be called X Cloud. Yeah, X Play is a G four channel. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like in terms of like xbox and their ecosystem and you can play I, i'm not sure if you guys have tried this at all but you can play halo on your phone you can play second Nuts 2 on your tablets like i play forza on my phone i have a, a backbone yeah. and I, I'm, I'm better at forza on my phone than i am my wow. tv it's very good just the easy pick up and play like i talked about it a couple of weeks ago i had yeah. to stay with my mom's for a little bit so easy just to, to open up the gate the cloud gaming app and jump into whatever i wanted it's incredible like super seamless doesn't take a lot of like setup or anything very few issues as well with the streaming when it first started i was in like a i think it's called xbox insiders thing a mm -hmm. couple of issues there with it but it's nearly it's nearly seamless even on my crappy internet yeah that's pretty cool i like i i have game pass on my pc i'd love to try some of the streaming stuff when i have a chance um yeah no any other thoughts about the google stadia uh <laughs> goodbye wagon <laughs> uh well I do remember like when Google was looking to enter the industry and there were rumors of Apple entering as well. Yes. So that, I was I was hoping that I've always wanted App, Apple to to just crush it, everyone. I, my dream <laughs> scenario would be Apple purchases Nintendo, then oh Nintendo God. releases games on good technology, state of the art <laughs> functional technology. It, and and they managed to get licenses to to like up all the the best Bethesda games and all that, that my life would be wow. very nice. If that were wow. to take place. <laughs> That'd be like, that's a, that's, that's your dream world that you said. Like, wow. Is Apple that your gaming Nintendo. prediction? Yeah. And they, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they, they, they named Noah Rosenfall, the, the company <laughs> spokesman. CEO. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm trying to think if they could like make a good, um, uh, um, what are they called? When you have two words that come together to make one, uh, man, I had this on the tip of my tongue, but I lost it. A Apple word. Tendo? Uh, uh, <laughs> no. Sorry, uh, uh, a portamento, where it's like Apple Tendo oh, or okay. Nindle. Anyway. Uh, um, Nindle sounds like some weird Kindle spinoff. <laughs> Nindle sounds like something I buy in a store that has like the windows covered up. Like, hey, you guys have any Nindles here? <laughs> um, yeah, honestly, when Google Stadia was first announced, Google already had a pretty bad track record of investing money into something and then just bailing on it. Um, I do know that there are certain cities in the States where they had tried to build a, like a fiber internet connection and then they bailed on it. And there are still cities that have half torn up sidewalks because of Google, because they just gave up on a project. Wow. So yeah, this is not surprising to me as, at, at all either. Stadia, it is a good tech. They have a bunch of servers and cloud-based, uh, operations happening there that I'm sure we'll just see like Google implemented into everything else that we use. So that is it for the news of the week. Pretty like significant news. We just don't really know what the result is going to be for Sony buying Bungie. GTA 6 is in active development. And of course, goodbye Google Stadia. Now is the fun time where it's only February 2nd. There's still 10 months left of the year. Literally anything can happen. I was talking to somebody last week, two weeks ago, about how it's crazy to me that they announced Guardians of the Galaxy at E3 it came out four months later without being like really leaked or anything. And it was a fun little surprise. So Noah, Jessica, and myself have gone through, written down three of our predictions for video games in 2022. Like I said at the top, that could be another acquisition. It could be they're bringing back Pac-Man in a 3D Battle Royale <laughs> PUBG-esque tournament. Oh, you've um, taken my one. How dare you? <laughs> oh, sorry. I can see your notes and your reflection. I, I saw that you wrote that oh, down. Nice. Uh, so, <laughs> so we're gonna go through of course we don't know each other's picks it's always fun to hear them authentically on the podcast and react to them um jessica i'm gonna have you go first today that's okay yeah uh i gotta start with my most boring one um of course because the other two well actually maybe this one is a bit out there uh my first gaming prediction for 2022 is i believe that the uncharted movie is going to come out and it's actually going to be well received by critics okay do you have and more specific than this yeah i think it's going to get an 80 percent or above on rotten tomatoes all right i'm writing this down because i yeah. that comes out <laughs> in a week and a half right so we, we can yeah. check pretty soon i think it's the i think it's the 18th um so yeah. i i think so it does yes it doesn't look fantastic it kind of looks generic and it doesn't really look fun if you're an uncharted fan mm -hmm. it doesn't have nathan fillion or nolan north as <laughs> as uh neat as everyone wanted 
Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's Tom Holland. People are going to go and I feel like Tom Holland fans are going to go in droves to see this. They are going to yeah. love it. I think critics like who aren't really in the game is going to be like, yeah, that was a solid action film. You know, I I don't see anything too offensive about it that it would really annoy critics. I'm, that's um, that's my caveat. I don't think it's going to be yeah. too well received by fans, but by the critics, I think it's going to be. So I think like the most recent example of this is probably when they tried to reboot Tomb Raider a few years ago with uh, mm-hmm. Alicia Vikander. Mm-hmm. And like they made that as like, oh, we're doing the, the Tomb Raider trilogy, like original Rise and then uh, Shadow. And then they never made that second movie. Um, I do wonder, like, I think I think you'll make a lot of money. I think you're right that as somebody who works at a movie theater sometimes, the amount of people who saw Dune just because of Timothy Chalamet I wow. think it was like I think it was over half maybe like there's people who mm. looked like they had no interest in sci-fi but dude with like uh shoulder length curly hair sign me up <laughs> yeah um, I mean jumping off of this I remember gonna go see um it was Spider-Man No Way Home actually yeah and usually whenever I go to the my personal movie theater it's a bunch of like young guy nerds sometimes there's a girl in there yeah, yeah so yeah. many girls in there just to see it for Tom Holland <laughs> yeah so many girls going out and like having like a girl's night out or a girl with a boyfriend <laughs> like he yeah. he just he brings the drones of people 100 percent. I think um I think you're right about it making money I don't think it reaches an 80 on Metacritic I just don't see a world where it's because I'm thinking about 80s on Metacritic and that's like that's like um I'd say the Uncharted Collection just got like an 82 like the remaster of four and uh lost legacy but i, I know we'll I'm, I'm out there I, I want double points if it is i'll give you enough. double points thank you <laughs> it's, it's like whose line is it anyway the points don't matter you can have a million points right now if you want <laughs> thank you yeah um real quick if there is a post credit scene in the uncharted movie what do they tease do they tease um oh, Chloe? I can't maybe well, she, well, i don't I think, even know she's gonna be in this i think chloe is in the like uh wow. she's like oh i'm chloe i'm sully's friend even though he I doesn't suppose have friends. He, he knew her from when he was young okay yeah i wonder if sense. elena shows mm. up in the post credit scene oh do you know what no actually thinking about this it'll be nathan philly and her north woman north oh in my some god sort of capacity that would yeah. really be cool and this is just the ideal scenario it won't happen but it would be cool yeah, are you looking forward to Uncharted movie, Noah? Or are you, I, I, you're you not a, a PlayStation guy, right? So you, Uncharted's not really... It, yeah, I'm deep. not really a PlayStation guy. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, because I, I don't know if Sam is going to be in this movie, Nathan Drake's brother, but Jessica, who do you think would be a good casting choice for Tom Holland's brother, Sam? Hmm. Anybody come to mind? Uh, off the top of my head, he could play his who's bigger like, brother. Who's like a Tom Holland-esque person they could just rope in for this uh just get someone in from the mcu get the- yeah seriously <laughs> yeah. Just get, rocket, get rocket raccoon <laughs> i am grit yes grit, get grit. <laughs> uh, that, i mean that would get people i would get people uh, watching i'm seeing a day one in that case um, <laughs> honestly okay. a serious answer to the question before i would have just yeah. said um troy baker but i don't think he's the most popular choice for people at the moment no. if he showed up people would be like who's that <laughs> whose face is that <laughs> Like, oh, that's uh, the guy from Infamous Second Son. Right, <laughs> Obviously. yeah. Obviously. That's the guy who was talking about NFTs a while ago and then mm, backtracked really yeah. fast. Mm, uh, the story of NFTs right there. Yeah. Oh, I was on a video call with a friend the other day and she asked me what NFTs were as if I was the expert. Just because mm-hmm. I do stuff with video games, I know what an NFT is. I feel yeah. like we're all kind of getting like, before I'd be like, what is an NFT? Now we're all just sort of getting this like knowledge just coming in. We don't even yeah. want the knowledge, but it's there now. Hmm. No, I'm like actively trying to empty my knowledge of NFTs out for like dumb stuff, like how many Pokemon are in the Johto Pokedex. <laughs> I have other things I want to remember. Okay, I'll take I'll take that. I'll take that <laughs> on board. Yeah. All right. So the Uncharted prediction. There it is. Noah, what do you have for us? Uh, so I'll do one of my less exciting ones first. So. There are several Star Wars games in development at, and they're well, maybe published by EA and developed by Respawn. So it's Res- Respawn. It Respawn Entertainment. They did Fallen Order, so so one of these games will be Fallen Order Two, and another I think they said was first person shooter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and uh, there is a third. I think yes. I'm not positive what it what it's going to be like but my first prediction is going to be we get at least one of these games in 2022 i would hope so um actually going back to last time you and i talked to noah you said that fallen order 2 is like one of your most anticipated games of the year possibly Mm -hmm. of 2022 that that holds for me like since you and i talked about it that one time like i want to go back and play the first one as well as like my hype is really building for fallen order 2 
Um, and you're feeling pretty confident that that's going to be, or one of these games will be out this year. Uh, yeah, I guess I'm confident one of them will be. Yeah. What was the last Star Wars game? Was it was it Squadron uh, Squadrons? Uh, I'm not sure. Is, mm. I think it, you might current, be right. The current thing is uh, that Knights of the Old Republic remaster everyone's talking about. Right. Which they haven't really, I mean, there hasn't been a lot of news this year yet, but I would love to hear more about that sooner than later. It, yeah, I'd, I'd like to play that. Yeah, over the last couple of weeks, there's been like a bug in me that just like the Star Wars bug is back in me in a weird way. I, I know exactly why, but I'm going to try and remain like light on on details on stuff but honestly a star wars game is perfect right now because i have this bug i want to play a game in that world i know the wolfenstein team but no they were doing indiana jones somebody's mm-hmm. working on a mandalorian game i think ubisoft right was that uh, a yeah, rumor that or is it true i think so yeah. yeah i think it was confirmed so that's the game i want the most though honestly if ea wants to throw like a pod racing game or oh, something in the yeah. middle um, I was. I would say that uh, Fallen Order Two would be my most anticipated because I've got a. I've got a little bit of a bad story with that. So I um. Oh, yeah? I go through. I go through like phases of things where I'll be like, I'll really be in the reading, or I'll really be in the comic books or games. I was really into a mobile game for about nine months of my life. It was mm-hmm. Marvel Contest of Champions. I'm not oh. proud of it. I'm not <laughs> yeah. proud of it. Okay. I didn't play any other game for nine months. Wow. It's the longest I've ever done that. And the game that got me back into gaming was Jedi Fallen Order. And I will be forever grateful wow. for it for getting me out of that loot box hole that was <laughs> Marvel Contest of Champions. And it was such a good game as well. It like combined like the best of like like the climbing and like Tomb Raider, but then the sort of like very mm. light Dark Souls elements. I was playing yeah. it on normal. I'd love to go back and play it on like a harder difficulty. It's the only time I wanted to go, yes, I'll go back and play it the harder difficulty, even though there's no achievements running linked to it. It's like, I just want to see what it's like. Yeah. It's such a good combat and exploration experience. And like without spoilers, it had one of my favorite moments of games that year. Was it 2018 Fallen Order came out? That's 2019, I think. I think it's 2019. Without spoiling if anybody hasn't played fallen order yet a, 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 a scene similar to something from rogue one if you know what i'm talking about um which but... they spoiled in the trailers do you remember that yeah i do i do that's so dumb Why? <laughs> they're so yeah. dumb um yeah fallen order 2 is so high up there for me and especially like um like we were saying with with stuff like mandalorian and boba fett and like i'm 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 more into star wars now than i probably have ever been um i really enjoyed force awakens i liked last jedi i did not even watch rise of skywalker so really yeah that's kind of where i am high highs and low lows but mm-hmm. yeah I, i'm i'm really anxious to play a game especially you know what we don't we have to talk about the the quantic dream one too too much but i am still slightly intrigued by that one despite the studio behind it being pretty um david cage not being a great person i want working on a, on a star wars game yeah I enjoy games like Detroit Become Human and Heavy, Heavy Rain, Rain. Mm-hmm. and I like to see how they do that in a Star Wars universe. Yeah. Anything else for your prediction, Noah, about Star Wars? Anything like specific you're hoping to see in Fallen Order 2? I, we did this like three weeks ago and I asked it, you, but I, I love to hear your yeah, thoughts still. We, yeah, I feel like we, we've covered it in detail yeah. on other podcasts. Uh, well, yeah. Yeah, just to, to, rem- to remind everyone, we said uh, we'd like to be able to play as non-humans. We, we'd like some more variety in combat styles and animations. Uh, we we talked about uh, uh, customization, more lightsaber parts made compatible with each other, more more lightsaber colors, and more force user looking yeah. robes. Yeah, uh, I would like- love to not be able to wear a poncho. Like, please. <laughs> <laughs> I was not excited when I unlocked a poncho. I was like, oh, this is great. But you get like 16 different colors of the same poncho throughout the game. It's amazing. Yeah, 16. At least, uh, was it BD1? Was that the little thing? At yeah. least it had at least it had cool little costumes. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, totally. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to Star Wars in the future, very sure. And the other thing I brought up about Fallen Order 2 that I want is side quests. I want to see mm-hmm. more stories like what we saw in Star Wars Visions told in the video game medium make it like a witcher 3-esque game where the side stories are almost more world building than the main story is so um my number three prediction i actually thought about this this morning um man they're making that last of us 2 multiplayer mode still apparently i don't think it's going to come out uh last of us 2 is almost two years old at this point do you know anybody who'd be dying if they release the multiplayer mode for it anymore because i I don't. If it was free, maybe. Yeah. Uh, also, 
I'm not somebody who played the first Last of Us multiplayer, so I'm not even really sure what the Same. hook or the appeal is of it that makes it different than just playing Apex or uh, Apex Legends or something I knew, else online. I knew it was. It was that time that everyone was trying to put multiplayer into the game, like Mass Effect 2 and 3 had a multiplayer yeah. mode. And yeah, it had 5, the more yeah. yeah, it had the more unique one. I know people who liked factions really liked factions. Me too. I... I I, I think your prediction could come free, but I think it's the opposite. I think they're really focusing on the online elements for this. Yeah, I, that's I think, why it's taken so long. Yeah, and one of the th one of my things to back it up is that Naughty Dog currently is working on a Last of Us remaster. So I wonder if maybe they just reboot original the the factions that everyone loved so much from the original. Maybe just reboot that with the remastered original game and start putting time and effort to Last of Us Three. I do worry about Naughty Dog being split into three teams right now. Uh, Last of Us remaster team online multiplayer team and last of us three team i really don't want to wait eight years for last of us part three i just kind of want them to release the remaster and start working on the new one without crunch i know last of us two uh really really was hard on the law the naughty dog employees the more time they have to work on it the less likely that's going to happen again so it, it it's the sake of i'm not going to play it anyway so why do i care as well as naughty dog has been working on it for two years and is it worth their time and money right now i don't know if it is it could be a good prediction there's so many th games you've heard of or m modes like this like similar yeah. i don't know if you remember but re verse was supposed to come out with uh the last resident evil resident evil village where is it gone it was supposed to be only be delayed by like a month right absolutely yeah. nothing said about it like it could it could probably just disappear. It's happened to so many things. It could, could yeah. be a good prediction. Yeah. I, I still have the reverse icon on my Sony because I'm still hoping that maybe I can run around as Jack Baker one day with a chainsaw <laughs> and chop up some Leon Kennedys. But yeah, I was fairly interested in it. Missed the theater. Like I downloaded it and just missed it. And then now I guess we can't yeah. ever play it. <laughs> the most jarring thing about it was like the, the sizes of the character models because you're in like you're in the Resident Evil 2 like police uh, the uh, RPG. mansion. But everything is scaled down. So like if you're playing as Leon and Claire, your head's like touching the ceiling of the hallway <laughs> and stuff. It is not good. Wow. Maybe that's yeah. where like, okay, we need to rethink this. <laughs> so we'll see. Maybe it comes out. But I'm starting to think more and more that it's not going to. Um, Jessica, what is your number two pick? Uh, which one should I put as my number two? Okay, this one's slightly more. Well, is it? Okay. This is, year is stacked with uh, high-profile video games coming out. Horizon, God of War, uh, God, what other ones? <laughs> so Every, many. Like, maybe Breath even, of the Wild. Maybe Breath of the Wild. There's like Marvel Midnight Suns is supposed to come out. Yeah. Suicide Squad, or maybe one of them got delayed. The I think Suicide Gotham Squad Nights. just got delayed. Yeah, it got delayed. It's so much. Yeah. But despite all the high-profile, big content from AAA developers... I think another indie game is going to win Game of the Year at the Game of the Year Awards. Really? Yeah. Past two years, we've had It Takes Two and Hades mm -hmm. win. Oh, yeah. I think there's just the last like two, three years, there's been a massive push for people advocating for indies and the design of indies over like the polish of a AAA game. Yeah. Like I know God of War is probably going to come out and blow people's minds away. And, but I, st I still think there's going to be some, maybe not even one that we know about, there's going to be an indie game that's going to come out that's going to really impress people, at least at least with the Game Awards, because they seem to be um, at least that big accolade handing it out to indies recently. And, and if you trace it back, and this is like top of my head, so I, I'm pretty sure this is right. 2017, they gave it to Breath of the Wild. 2018 was God of War. 2019 was Sekiro. And then it's been Hades and it takes two cents. So there has been this shift on focus from triple a to the more independent uh sphere mm -hmm. especially last year when a lot of the games i was hearing about when it came to game of the year was unpacking it was a lot of indie darlings like chicory and um inscription and stuff like that mm -hmm. like look games, yeah totally um i think that's a really good guess you don't know what the game is but <laughs> some i like... meant i meant to go and check because i gave a release schedule if you mm. if you want to talk for a wee bit i'll have a check at what games it could be but it could also just be like a random indie game because i didn't know loop was coming out i didn't know inscription was yeah. coming out like and they just they, they blow a lot of people away yeah and sometimes even like when we do like reviews we'll claim a game before knowing too too much about it like an indie and then we play it and we're like oh wait this is amazing how is this not on my radar beforehand mm -hmm. um i think of games like i reviewed last year cyber shadow and i reviewed um turnip boy commits tax evasion and both those games like <laughs> were surprising gems for me that i kind of just like signed up for without knowing too much yeah, about them for me as well I, I reviewed lake which i was interested yeah. beforehand because it was in the wholesome games showcase at like the e3 time um 
but I didn't expect to like it so much. Like I feel like indies are just like they're they're, they're really focusing on different elements than AAA games, and yeah. it's really resonating with people in the in the industry lately. The one game I think that might be able to do it, although it is apparently it's a little bit hard, is Chinook. I don't know if you people. Oh have seen. yeah, it's the Fox it, Fox one. Yeah, like a Fox Zelda Dark Souls game. Like that sounds yeah. uh, game of the year material. <laughs> It might be uh might be not the most accurate analogy, but like I wonder if games and movies are getting more alike where the big blockbuster movies don't seem to be nearly as good as they used to be. Um, we can look at like um they just released uh, like the new Ghostbusters, for example, like they didn't need to do that. But it's indie darlings like the French Dispatch and Nomadland and stuff like that that get the critical buzz. They get the awards. They get all this stuff. Yeah, like original content, not sequels, yeah. not 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 what you'd think yeah would be well honestly like wordle w wordle could be that game what if wordle won game of the year at the game awards <laughs> yeah maybe they'll just create an, an award for wordle but yeah yeah, yeah. Hey, wait is that your prediction is that your next prediction wordle no, wins I... game of the year no that that was me helping you with yours <laughs> <laughs> um there's other things as well like it, it, these haven't been slated for a release date but somerville I don't yes that was that. yeah i'm i cannot wait for that game little devil inside like yep. if that comes out that seems really good um mm -hmm. there's also little ones as well that i've got on my radar like chinatown, chinatown detective agency mm -hmm. vigilance norco like there's just these tiny things that could just take off and especially like in the industry too where like if you look at indie games compared to triple a they're probably like 10 to 1 right mm -hmm. like i know there's games mm -hmm. every day on steam but the ones that we talk about and review and stuff like that there's there's a huge difference and the quantity of independent games have a higher success rate than AAA games these days. And it's a smaller investment. Oh, I'll pay $8 for unpacking. Perfect. It's the best three hours of my life all week. Yeah, and things like Game Pass, giving people access to it. Like I played like unpacking. I played yeah. them in Globe Play. I played their lake went on to it. Uh, we, we both played Nobody Saves the World. It's an yeah. awesome game. Yeah. Uh, I think also those, and the Switch. The Switch is obviously known for its great indie support, mm -hmm. even if it is just shoveled into there <laughs> sometimes. Yeah, I think I think the boosted accessibility as well as access to these games through Game Pass and stuff is just it's just a, a great boon for independent games everywhere. Uh Noah, what do you have for your number two prediction? All right, number two, let's let's talk about something really di different. So oh. it, yeah, so one of my favorite games that I played on the Switch was Dragon Quest Eleven. Okay, yeah, yeah. Found that really fun, like just playing a campaign for weeks. So my second prediction is DQ12 is going to get a trailer this year and we'll get a release date for it. Very cool. Um, when did DQ11 come out again? How, how long has it been since the last one? 2017, so it is about time. So about the same um, development time as like Breath of the Wilds too, almost. Yeah. Which is pretty incredible um yeah yeah i'm um also looking forward to it what are you looking forward to most would you say mm, i hmm, i really enjoyed it, that world it's that it, those aren't really sequential though so so there's no guarantee that they'll they'll even do it the same way i i mm -hmm. enjoyed those characters a, a lot like the once you have all i think it's eight of them and you can yeah. just like switch them out based on what like what you want to be on display that that was really fun. Mm -hmm. I've always wanted to get DQ 11 on my switch. Cause it has that mode where you can play it in 16 bit, like retro, you can throw back from like the current graphics or you can play it like a top down SNES game, which is so cool. They did the whole game like that, except for cutscenes, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think I think cutscenes are all are all current, and yeah. and they threw in like random levels from from past games. It's yeah, it was really well done. Was it your first Dragon Quest, or are you a fan of the series for a, for a while? Uh, that was my first one, believe it or not. I have some of the Dragon Quest spinoff games, like I have Dragon Quest Joker for the Wii or DS. I never played a main series one, but they've always been on my radar, especially DQ Eleven, which got like so much love and praise especially from people I follow who don't normally play JRPGs. Mm -hmm. I feel like it just kind of nails that uh, SNES era RPG kind of throwback that not a lot of modern RPGs are able to do as successfully. Yeah, it's a really interesting style. Like, it, mm. I think, like, they maintain the art for each game, like, same, same monsters, same same kinds of themes but it, it's different every time at this at mm. the same time 
Um, very like Dragon Ball inspired art, right? Whenever I see Dragon Quest, I have to remind myself it's not Goku I'm looking at. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dragon Quest. Yeah. That sounds really cool. And um, I think that's very possible that we hear more about DQ12. Of course, a game like that would usually launch in Japan before here, right? Or do you remember if DQ11 was like a U- international release? Uh, I, I don't remember. Do, do yeah, you know, I don't remember either. You're right. It, it released in Japan first and then it came out over here. I think there's so much localization to go on in those games specifically that as much as we try and go for international release dates with like Pokemon and everything else these days, Persona and DQ seem like the two franchises where there is always going to be a gap. Mm-hmm. But as long as we don't get leaked and spoiled on whatever happens there, I'm happy with that. Um, so my number one to, to my number two prediction, sorry. Um, I was playing Pokemon Legends this morning and I was trying to figure out we have a Pokemon game in January just so weird we never get games in january it's usually november or the summertime so i was wondering if maybe we'd get another let's go in november or maybe we actually get gen 9 in november but the more i think about it the less i think we're getting a main series pokemon game twice in a year and i think we might see a spin-off come back to life would you guys be excited if nintendo announced pokemon stadium 3 for the switch Uh. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> I don't think so. My, my prediction is not a main series uh, Pokemon game, but a Pokemon Stadium reboot comes out this year. Yeah, That's, good. That's nice that. and specific. I don't think it's a lot of work for Nintendo. They have these character models. They do the two animations for their attacks. Easy peasy. You throw essentially all 900, however many there are into this one game. That's cool. You can do that. But what I really want is more mini games. Uh, I love Pokemon Stadium 1 and 2. The Pokemon are cool, but those mini games were the best. Whether it was uh, Sand True Dig or the Metapod game where you had to harden before a rock hit you, I want all of those games remastered plus some more. Um, Pokemon Stadium is like the best Pokemon party game. And as somebody who had like company over for the last couple of days, we did Mario Party, we did Mario Kart, and then we started running out of ideas about what to play pretty shortly. And I feel like having a Pokemon Stadium with mini games and multiplayer would just be perfect for having friends over, some drinks and some uh, some battles and games. You're right. You guys... That's like perfect combining Pokemon with a party game. Yeah. Especially this generation. Like you're like the millennial, I guess you call it generation. Yeah. Love yeah. Pokemon when you're younger. I love Pokemon Stadium when I was younger. Mm-hmm. I've never played the second one because I never actually had it. I it was like a social thing. I went down to my cousin's house and we played Pokemon Stadium and it was just such a good memory. And like yeah. I remember back then as well. Like, do you remember Crash Bash? Did you ever play yes, it? Yes, yeah. I love party games back then and like yeah. Nintendo is kind of the only p- person keeping them forward. So if anyone was going to do it, yeah, it would be them combining it with a Pokemon game. Perfect. Yeah. And like, I think I went back to Pokemon stadium one a couple of years ago and there really isn't much there. Like you're picking your team of six and you're fighting people and that's about it. But what I really want is like you're saying, Jessica, a game with just a bunch of fun modes and Pokemon, especially for when I have like my niece or nephew over, we can play like a board game. Pokemon thing would be sweet. Um, so yeah, Pokemon Stadium, you heard it here first. Uh, when they announce it, you can email me. Actually, no, I'm not going to give you my email. <laughs> <laughs> DM me on Twitter if you want to talk to me. Uh, Jessica, what is your number one pick? I'd say this is my most specific one yet. and mm-hmm. Well, most likely not happen, but if it does, I can say I said it. <laughs> um, I don't know if you guys remember the rumors back in like June and July that Kojima was doing an exclusive game for the Xbox. Yes. Um. So co- uh, expanding on that, I think because he apparently it's Jeff Grubb who said he they, he sent or he signed uh, an intent of agreement to mm-hmm. make an exclusive game. I I think that they are going to do uh, announce an exclusive game for the Xbox. But because Sony has been talking about they're going to make more acquisitions in the year and Kojima has had such good relations with Sony, yeah. I think they're going to plan to make an Xbox exclusive, but Sony is going to buy Kojima Productions this year. Are you So are you predicting like a reverse death loop where yeah. uh, mm-hmm. Microsoft is going to sign on, this, mm-hmm. this game is going to be an Xbox exclusive, but before it even comes out, Sony's buying Kojima Studios. Yeah, they'll have to honor the agreement. It will be an exclusive. Xbox will have their Kojima game, whatever it is. But Sony will uh, will buy Kojima. It's a really intri- really intricate prediction. I gotta like graph this it down is. real quick. So Kojima uh, makes game for Microsoft. Okay, mm-hmm. I, I see. Announced. I, see it. I don't think it comes out or anything. Just announced, yeah. and then also it is announced that uh, Sony is going to buy uh, Kojima Productions. Yeah, really out I there, think- guess, but. 
Okay. I think I think it's a good guess, and I even think there's a world where Kojima just keeps going to company to company, being like, "Yeah, I'll make you a Death Stranding. Yeah, I'll make you a whatever. I'll make you a whatever." Like, he <laughs> he he could stay independent, and it might be what he wants to do. But at the same time, like you said, he's worked with Sony pretty much since the inception of Metal Gear Solid. Um, obviously, Death Stranding was a PlayStation exclusive until it was on PC. So yeah, and I think I think Sony and Kojima would go hand in hand and make some some really good stuff as well. I think Sony may even have some power to get the um, Metal Gear Solid IP back from from Konami and maybe do some work there. Who knows? Yeah, and if they bought Kojima Productions on Konami, that would send Metal Gear fans yeah. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> when we were talking about acquisitions last week, we were like, oh, Capcom, EA. Nobody even said, I mean, maybe we did say Konami, but what are they doing? Konami's a good shout because yeah. they have, I think, no, that's not them. They they, they kind of went off games. Yeah. Game IPs, doing... they kind of retired them a wee yeah. bit. They're doing pachinko machines now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But if you buy Konami, you get Castlevania, you get Silent Hill, and you get Metal Gear Solid. Some of the, the three of the biggest franchises in gaming history. So, yeah, that's a good guess. I, I'll be curious to see how that plays out. If he's making an Xbox game, as long as it comes to Game Pass, I'll be happy. As long as they don't <laughs> have to buy an Xbox, I'll be good to go. Yeah. Um, Noah, what is your number one prediction? All right, my number one prediction is that Starfield launches and is the most successful Bethesda launch since Fallout 4. Are you talking uh, sales, critical reception? So the thing is, it's hard to measure that because Pete Hines never actually provides the figures, so I don't really know how he measures it. But but I do predict that Pete Hines will tweet most successful launch ever sometime after launch. (laughs) Because right now that has to go to Skyrim, right? Like um, it, probably if the yeah, and they've sir they've sold thirty million or so. It, yeah, or well, by now it's more. Yeah, yeah. Last measured, it's yeah, it's tens of millions. But the best launch was Fallout Four. It, at least yeah. that's what Pete Hines said. <laughs> so I, I don't know how he's measuring that. I assume sales, but yeah, yeah we, I, I, I predict that he will say. Starfield is their new next successful launch following their November 11th release. Yeah, I think that's a really good one because I think Mm -hmm. I don't think intentionally, but I think Bethesda's done a really good job of getting fans really, really pumped for Starfield. Right. Um, It's almost like and we've barely seen anything of it, too. Like it is this like this mythical thing that we don't even know what it's going to be yet. No, and whenever I'm on the podcast with you, we just end up speculating about what Starfield's going to be half the time anyway. Hmm. I think they've done such a good job of building up like the tension and the anticipation for this game. Mm-hmm. I could see myself driving by a Walmart on launch day and seeing a line at the door, like the night before kind of thing. One of those, like I'm going to a midnight release. I'm, I don't even realize I wanted to go to a midnight release, but Starfield seems like a game. I would hear people doing that for. Yeah. I think right. it's up there. No, I was... The thing is a uh, game pass now, like a lot of people are going to get this for oh, a yeah. subscription. So I don't know how that factors into the success, but uh, we will see. <laughs> Yeah, I could see it being like, oh, um, in the first week, uh, Starfield has like is like the most played like opening Bethesda yeah. game, um, especially like with how far we've come with digital storefronts and Game Pass and stuff. It's gonna be hard to get an accurate measure of who's playing it and how long are they playing it for. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah, this thing is gonna be big. I think and probably at the moment of games that are announced, I think Starfield is the biggest game of the year at the moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I forgot to even mention it when I was talking about big games, but yeah. yeah. And I think yeah. I think that's a very sound prediction, actually, Noah, because because of its inclusion in Game Pass, because the numbers of Halo Infinite and Forza came out, and they were like fifteen million people playing it, twenty million people playing it. If you had like that happening with uh, not free, but with your subscription, Game mm-hmm. Pass, Starfield, absolutely, it could be the biggest launch ever. Yeah, especially if like I, I, you know more than I do, Noah. If they have announced any sort of online features with starfield i don't know if they're adapting anything from 70 fallout 76 to starfield but uh doubtful but i doubt they'd want two of those out right now yeah so it, yeah i'd assume it that it is it, yeah, I, i'd like it if they did co-op but i would assume that it is single player yeah yeah if there was any online feature i bet you that would also help you like hey man you want to hop in and just like explore the planet of zubar i don't know what they're going to call their planets um but that'd be cool. But single player adventures, I mean, those still sell like hotcakes. Look at God of War. Look at Death Stranding. Um, yeah, I'm I'm so eager for Starfield. And once again, shout out to whoever writes the guide for that game. <laughs> <laughs> you have a lot of work ahead of you. Um, so my number one prediction, it actually feels like my most boring 
prediction, but it's the one I feel the strongest about. And I think that when Sony releases their Spartacus Game Pass, it is going to be so disappointing. Like, I think they're going to miss the mark by more than a fair margin, starting with not having first party games released day one on it. Um, I'm going to say they're going to have a really not perfect backwards compatibility list of games that you can play from Sony's past. Um, I just think they're going to think they're Sony and then get away with whatever they want, whatever the price they want. And we have been so spoiled by Microsoft Game Pass. Fans aren't going to be patient with Spartacus when it comes out. They're not going to want to pay 30 bucks, uh, whatever the price is, so they can play um, Max Payne 2, PS2 emulation, you know? I, I just don't think I, think... I think they're going to launch and then have to retool everything after launch because of really, really negative feedback. Hmm. And that's, that's that's my a, guess. That's a solid one. I think it could go either way. I think it'll yeah. either be, yeah, we're putting day one games on this. Yeah. We're going to blow Game Pass out of the water. Or are you right? Because that seems unrealistic that they do that. It's just going to get compared to Game Pass, and it's just going to yeah. disappoint in comparison. And it's going to become like a PS Now where like it exists, but like is anybody actually using it? Like. I'll I'll keep PS Plus. I'll get my three free games a month, even though I didn't like any of the ones this month. Um, but I don't know if I want to pay Sony more money for Parappa the Rappa, you know? So, yeah, that's that's my final guess. Like, I feel like we're getting close. There's been rumors about a Sony presentation happening in February where they might start revealing actual plans and information about Spartacus. But when it launches this summer or this fall, I just think it's going to be just a just a wet fart of a launch, and that's the that's the best that's the only words I have for it. So you write that down. That's your prediction: wet uh, fart it, of a launch. That's the quote <laughs> on my sheet right now. <laughs> so yeah, mm. so we got some wild predictions. Let's go through them one more time. Um, I'll start off with mine. My number three was that The Last of Us Two multiplayer is going to get canceled. My number two was that Pokemon Stadium is getting a reboot. And my number one prediction was Sony is going to flop on their Game Pass. Noah, what were your three predictions again? All right. My first was we get one uh, EA and Respawn Entertainment Star Wars game by the end of this year. We get a release date and trailer for a direct, um, excuse me, for Dragon Quest 12. Mm -hmm. And we get Starfield with the most successful Bethesda launch since Fallout 4. Nice. And then Jessica, your three? Uh, my third is that the Uncharted will come out, be well received by <laughs> critics, and get over eighty percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Yep. And I think an indie game will win Game of the Year at the mm -hmm. at the Game of the Year Awards. And I think that uh, Kojima is going to have an exclusive for Xbox, but Sony will buy Kojima Productions. It's going to be really crushing at the Game Awards when Wordle beats Starfield for Game of the Year. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be it's going to be a close competition, mm -hmm. but I don't know. It could, it's anyone's race at this point. <laughs> I really like how we all had different, like, pretty varied predictions as well, like, involving different IPs and franchises and what could happen. Um, in this industry, literally anything can happen at any point, and it's it's very exciting kind of just guessing and predicting what you think could be it. I woke up four days ago and saw that Sony bought Bungie, right? Like, what world are we living in at this point? Yeah, I found um, it so hard to come up with this, actually, because that's why I went with kind of a bit weird ones, like, mm -hmm. this probably won't happen, because I didn't think that xbox would ever buy activision i didn't think sony would buy bungie yeah. like, it was crazy the weirder this industry gets the harder it is to predict anything like i don't know uh i try and make up things on the spot and then i always uh forget halfway through but like i don't know they're not gonna put mario in final fantasy 16 like it, or they could they could <laughs> no they could the games have been opened. i did you, almost make a yeah. prediction that game pass would come on to not not uh sony consoles but maybe switch I feel like yes. that is probably a potential that maybe could happen, but I, I chickened out. That was like maybe last year prediction I would have had, because at that point they had dropped Cuphead and the Ori games on Switch. And I was like, oh, there's something happening here. Mm. But it's been long enough now that we haven't seen or heard anything new that I wonder if that's still part of the plan. But yeah. I just think they're being very aggressive with Game Pass. Like they're pushing yeah. it so far. Yeah, I'm and I'm happy. Like I said, I'm playing all these games, paying my flat fee a month. Um, I I got my new I got a new TV on the weekend, and I cannot wait to play Forza on it. I haven't yet, but I'm stoked to play uh, some Forza Horizon Five on there. Um, but I think in terms of the Keen Gamer podcast, I think that's going to wrap it up for this week. I want to thank Noah and Jessica for joining me again for a great show. Uh, before we take off, Noah, anything you want to plug before we go? 
Um, no, nothing from my end. Yeah, for sure. Well, if you want to check out Noah's work, he does do the Boba Fett reviews for Keen Gamer that are really good. So I recommend checking those out. Jessica, anything you want to plug before we take off? Just if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's at Razzie Jesse. Absolutely. Uh, and I'm Kyle Shamillard. We will be we will be back again next week for another episode. I don't have a topic yet with games like Horizon and Elden Ring coming up, possibly some prediction roundtables about that. Um, we will see. If you haven't already, please go to KeenGamer.com. Check out our reviews and opinions on video games, movies, and TV shows. If you haven't already, please like us on Spotify. We really uh, appreciate any five-star ratings. Uh, drop us a like and a follow. We always appreciate that as well. Hopefully everyone out there has a fantastic day, and we will see you again next week. Goodbye, everyone.